According to lead investigator Sham Sunder of the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, World Trade Center 7 collapsed at freefall acceleration for more than 100 feet of its fall. What does the speed of the collapse reveal to us? Essentially, in less than seven seconds, uh, Tower 7 came down upon itself. Building 7, uh, the NIST reports admits, fell at the rate of gravity for the first 100 feet. Well, that's impossible unless there's nothing resisting it. It's just like taking your car keys out and just dropping them. That's how fast the building came down for over 100 feet. Which, and the only way you can get that is when there's zero resistance. And so what we're looking at is a building just coming straight down, falling right through itself with zero resistance. Buildings don't have zero resistance which is why you feel comfortable walking into a building. A building cannot do free fall with a huge structural, steel structural system in place to support it without it being blown up. That's the only way it could, could come down at free fall. The failure of all these connections as the primary means of uh, structural failure is uh, inconsistent with a natural gravitational collapse and indicates the presence of other agents which would dismember these connections. I'm David Chandler. I have a bachelor's degree in physics from Harvey Mudd College and a master's in education from Claremont Graduate University and another master's in mathematics from California Polytechnic University. Uh, I've been teaching for over 30 years. I'd heard people say, well, it came down at free fall or close to free fall and so forth, so I decided I'd measure it myself. I have a tool that I use in teaching, which allowed me to take a video and put a dot on each frame to follow the motion of things. And so you can measure speeds and accelerations and it'll do the analysis. One of the fundamental laws of nature is the conservation of energy. In order for it to be falling down with zero resistance, it means that resistance had to have been removed by something else. And this claims that the columns were buckling in the first several seconds before the free fall occurred. Now I don't see that how that's possible. And in the final report, they modified it, they tried to doctor it up. They still tried to say that it was essentially correct, but then they modified it and they actually admitted there was a period of free fall involved. But they never changed their model. Like how do you all of a sudden allow for free fall when they just got done explaining how it couldn't have been in free fall? If I were a scientist in this, I'd be embarrassed to try to put forward something like that. It was clearly a fraudulent argument. In other words, NIST is telling us that the building below it ceased to exist uh, for the first few seconds of the collapse of the building. Well, things in physics just don't cease to exist and cease to resist the forces that are on them. Free falling for uh, eight stories. So, we know that happened. It's, uh, it's been uh, measured uh, and it's on videos, everyone can see it, NIST has admitted it free f went into free fall for eight stories. That's a bothersome part of the puzzle because NIST never explained it. Absolutely no resistance to the descent whatsoever. The building didn't disappear so the building can fall for 100 feet at free fall speed. That's impossible. That's uh, a violation of, of the fundamental law of physics that says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that evidence alone would indicate that the official story doesn't hold water. There was no time for this elastic deformation and plastic deformation, which would have absorbed energy and decreased the descent to less than free fall speed. As energy is drained away from the system to deform those members, it would slow down the descending mass and cause a descent at less than free fall speed. 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system and that is intended to keep it from going anywhere. A building cannot do free fall with a huge structural steel structural system in place to support it. There's no resistance until the building is down maybe halfway. Buildings tend to De be delayed as they collapse. Uh, they don't just pancake down like this uh, in a very short 
period of time. If the pancake theory works, it's going to hit hesitation, and there was no hesitation. Going from motionless to free fall instantly. One continuous motion. There couldn't have been any structural resistance. Uh, buildings just don't behave like that. If floors fall, they tend to fall and are braced by the floor directly beneath it. And there's some delay there. This is inconsistent with the energy redistribution that would be required from the descending mass to the remaining structure. Completely impossible. And this themselves have to recognize the implications of this. The fact that they haven't is fraudulent. The connections are designed with a safety factor of 1.5 to 3 times the failure load for the member. So this assures that the member will always fail first, first in an elastic mode and then a plastic mode. Ideally, the member would fail before the connection. You don't want the connections to fail first. The connections failed first uh, without the, any of the members exhibiting large deformations or, uh, or deflections. Uh, over 400 connections per second had to fail in order for the, mem for the members to be released and for the structure to descend at almost freefall rate. To fail at the rate that they did um, progressively across the building, uh, even if a floor were to collapse, it still wouldn't be able to collapse all of the connections simultaneously at the rate that it did without secondary explosions. There's no hesitation. There was no hesitation when it was to hit story after story. If you were to look at a standard moment frame uh, steel connection, which is a welded connection between the beam and the column, it would take on the order of around 500,000 pounds to shear off one connection. And if you multiply that by 400, put maybe a safety factor of four, you would require 50 million pounds of force per second in order to collapse the building the way it was shown uh, based on the NIST report and what we saw on the video evidence of uh, the video of the building that day. It's highly unlikely, uh, don't know how that could ever happen uh, without uh, secondary explosions. Uh, it's, it's not logical or reasonable. The fact that it's coming down at free fall says all of the energy is being used to just make it go straight down, which means it's coming down through itself and not breaking up the building as it goes. Something else has to be clearing the way. And that is smoking gun evidence to me. I think that's one of the primary pieces of evidence that um, these buildings really were demolished. They weren't just accidents that happened. We might anticipate that an unevenly damaged building would fall over. Yet, videos of the collapse of Building 7 show a fairly symmetrical fall. How do we make sense of this? The exterior of the building comes down fully, symmetrically, and at one time. Both sides of the building come down completely. This is fully indicative of full structural support being removed for at least six stories. That could not happen by fire. If, you know, if there was some fire in one corner, it would have collapsed maybe in that corner, but not the total building free-falling. Got that corner that's going to want to topple over, but we didn't see that. We saw it come straight down. If the buildings had come down by fire, we would have seen a more natural progression of collapse. We may have seen, you know, the buildings actually topple over to one side, um, certainly not coming down in its own footprint. And clearly a more asymmetrical pattern uh, should have been present. Smoking gun. It cannot happen that when you have asymmetric damage, you will get a perfectly symmetrical collapse. It would not have been a uniform collapse. The building might have partially fallen over, but the building would not have collapsed as it did. Uh, that, this doesn't make any logical sense. For it to come down straight down upon itself, you would need to basically take out the supports at the center, at the core. 
the exterior columns on the outside, on the outside as well as on the inside, at the bottom would have to be severed almost at the same time. In my professional opinion, in my experience, for World Trade Center 7 to collapse straight down upon itself as video indicates as everything that we've witnessed, the, the supports at the center essentially all had to be taken out at once. Well, that's another indicator that this NIST report is very suspect because I would have expected in a classic implosion, as I've seen numerous times, is the core to fail. My name's Tom Sullivan. I worked for Control Demolition Incorporated, CDI, the top rated explosive demolition firm in the world. As an explosives loader, my job was to place explosives in the buildings to prepare them for demolition. I was licensed while in New York by the New York Fire Department to handle explosives. And I worked on major projects such as Seattle Kingdom, the Free River Stadium, Philadelphia Naval Hospital, and the and key span gas holders in New York. I would expect the center of the building to start moving first. And then as the as the implosion progresses, then the sides come in, then the rest of the building is involved. What I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building uh, follows along with it. And uh, there were so many columns in the building that were not affected by either the fires or the impact damage, and they all came down, just at once. So it's a little disheartening, and it's implausible. When it's all finished, the outside walls from the lower floors are piled one on top of the other right in the middle of the building just like a house of cards if it were coming down. Logic tells you that if you have a single failure at some random point in the building, that the entire building is not going to collapse. The collapse uh, would have been a chaotic, random event. The building would have partially collapsed, possibly, but it didn't. There was a total collapse, and there's very few things that could explain that, none of which are addressed by the NIST report. According to NIST, the failure occurred at column 79 on level 12. This means basically as they're talking about a single columnar collapse or failure that resulted in a total collapse of the building. That just does not make any sense. As a structural engineer, I, I don't uh, believe that the failure of one column would normally bring down an entire building in the way we saw World Trade Center 7 come down because of redundancy, because of uh, all the other columns in the building that were not affected. NIST provided computer animations in support of their fire collapse theory. But what do independent engineers say about these animations? When you observe the footage of how the building failed and when you look at the, the the animation of the failure, and compare that to what you actually observe in reality. I think they, they disprove their own theories. It is impossible for it to, for it to fail the way they said. I, I've seen the uh, animation sequence from the National Institute of Standards and Technology for their model, their mathematical model of the collapse of building number seven. And they have the uh, inside members that one column gave way, which they claim uh, resulted in the collapse of all the uh, surrounding members and then this precipitated a global collapse. The NIST computer model actually they had done a bunch of uh, finite element models of the connections, individual connections, so they had connections failing before the members failed. Four part connections, when three of the four parts failed they considered it to be all failed. The exterior of the NIST World Trade Center 7 computer simulation model, which they put together to try to explain their theory, shows large, very large deformations which are not observed in the video of the actual event. Yet they don't attempt to explain this in the report on why their model doesn't represent or replicate reality. What's actually happening with the NIST computer model, it's behaving like a natural collapse would. It would be deforming the exterior of the building if the whole interior was collapsing prior to the exterior. What we're seeing is what would happen in a natural collapse and what we saw, what we see on the real video is not a natural collapse. So I think that the NIST model is flawed. 
Uh, of course, they won't release all of their uh, parameters uh, that they use to model the uh, collapse, and uh, that is a primary problem for them. NIST has also repeatedly refused to release computer input data um, that was requested through the Freedom of Information Act from them in the past concerning World Trade Center 1, 2, and 7.